I am really interested in the products of Australia apart from meat and the dairy products that New Zealand and Australia they are well known for. It. Mm -hmm. I don't have to introduce that. Almonds in the markets as such they don't you know normally they don't write origins. But I was not aware that Australia had almonds and you don't eat any samples or anything. These are looking very big almonds. The um, well yeah. the, the Australian almond industry has been um, in operation now for over 20 years okay. and it's been growing um, over the last um, more so in the in the last sort of 12 to 14 years our acreage today um, is is around about um, I think 60,000 acres um, and we're producing a total tonnage this year on our crop of around 76,000 metric tons of kernel. Yeah. So the um, main growing area of almonds is northern Victoria, New South Wales, and South Australia along the Murray River, which is the picture here. So it's really the life stream of feeding the orchards in, in Australia. Yeah. And uh, size-wise, compared to the almonds being imported in Brazil, you have, you have been yeah. to Dubai many times, yes. you have seen the markets. Yes. Of yeah. course, you do your survey before you start anything. Yeah. So, well, how do you compare these? Do you think you will take the market share from the other No. The, the volume, um, if you look at Australia from a volume perspective compared to that of California, we're such a, a small um, grower in comparison to that of California, so we can never capture their market share. The advantage that um, Australia delivers is that we, when we're harvesting our material, California is in bloom. So, yes, so you have some buyers that obviously want to switch across to a fresher crop base, which is Australian material. They've, they're then very careful on looking at what our weather conditions are like during our harvest period to ensure that we're getting nice, bright, light colour product. And unfortunately, in the last couple of years, we've, we had had rain over the harvest period, um, which presented a slightly darker kernel. But this year, we've got perfect weather conditions and we've got beautiful, blonde, almond, sweet, crisp, and of course, buyers now are looking at that, saying we want to buy Australian product. Lawrence, you have really enlightened me on this. I have no idea about almonds. That they have an aging factor, and the weather, and the rain, yeah. how it affects. But uh, why are we just comparing uh, California almonds? You know, here in this region, we're getting from Afghanistan, from India, from Pakistan, all these uh, Iran. They yeah. Are also yeah. What, what? How do you compare with those almonds? Well, the material that comes from Afghanistan and Iran are different varietal bases and they're different shapes. They, they have a slightly different flavour profile. Australia has typically followed that of California with its varietal base. It's organic. No. We, we do, I guess the difference is between Australia and, and the US is typically we don't use pesticides within our orchards, typically so we spray with oils. Um, we haven't had pest issues in Australia as that of California where they have orange navel worm and other pests. Um, but there are some organic growers in Australia but the market is still quite small. Um, it's because we've got a, a very high labour cost in Australia, growing organics because it's more manual based with labour is very very costly. Costly, exactly. Yeah. I can see any Thing marked organic, the price you can imagine it will be high. Yeah. All, although it is a natural product, natural thing, why they have to increase mm. the price because of the uh, vast mass production and all. Yeah. That's the thing. Now, what do you do with Australia being the imaginative people they are? They are always inventing new ways of cutting waste and all. Now, you pack, when you are packing them, you must be packing them and roasting them and giving them gift bags. What do you do with the kernel, or with the shell of the? Uh, the how we uh, we grind it up and it goes into the cattle feed industry. It can be given to them as yeah. people. I can't maybe use them in the hunting material. No, we we our, our particular company. At the moment, we sell it into the stock feed industry. Um, it's got a, a high protein base in it, and it's also 
good for the marble of the beef. Um, but we're also at the moment building a, a generation power plant of where we will actually burn Burning. burn the hull for power generation. You're making them into bricks or something? No, we grind it up and we just feed it into into a furnace oh, burner. As a powder. Yeah, okay. and we then pre we we get an ash base out of it, hot ash, and we sell the pot ash off as a byproduct of the after we've burnt it. And that power from this particular plant that we're building will feed our um, pumps to the river and also oh, our the manufacturing machine. Yes, also the manufacturing. Well, this, sorry, it's a layman's question. What mm. do you do with that ash? What did you call that? It's pot ash. What do you do with it? It's sold within the nursery industry of where you can. Uh, they use it to build up soil structures or change the uh, oh, like acidity of lime. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. So, Lawrence, I had promised you we will take only five minutes and Nigel. Thank you very much. And You're that's welcome. really informative. Yeah. I have yeah. learned a lot my lesson. Yeah. And uh, we'll be sending you a URL once we have edited all these videos mm -hmm. around. Yeah. And uh, you can uh, download the video if you want, if you yeah. like it. I hope yeah. you like it. Yeah. Otherwise, it will be playing on YouTube and all those things. You don't mind that. No, no, that's fine. No problem. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Thank you for well, tolerating me and yeah. your sense of humor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. See you. See you.